Hello, and welcome to Level Up Onboarding Essentials. Today, we are going to talk about the first few minutes of gameplay, why they are so critical to a game's success, and how you can make the most out of yours. Onboarding refers to the first few minutes of a player's experience. In other words, the first impression that new players will have of your game, which is why it is also known as the first time user experience or Fatui. It is your opportunity to tell players, this is what the game is, here's how you have fun, and here's why you should come back and play again tomorrow. It involves introducing the world and the gameplay to new players and may include tutorials to help them learn how to play. You're essentially selling new players on your game, trying to convince them to invest their limited time in continuing to play. If you're successful, those players will come back the next day and maybe even bring their friends. If your onboarding is less successful, those players might not come back tomorrow or ever again. And that's why the Vitui is arguably the single most important piece of content in a free-to-play game. And because it has to wait until everything from gameplay to UI is finished, because it is so important to get right, it is usually the last piece of content completed before a game's launch. And the iteration may not stop there. You may find that you need to continue fine-tuning your first-time user experience well after your game is live. But I promise, all that effort will be worth it because of what we call the player funnel. The top of the funnel represents all the players who enter your game for the very first time. They begin to experience your game from the moment they spawn in to the gameplay, the level design, the user interface, any tutorials that you provide to help them learn how to play. Some of those players will complete the first time user experience. They'll finish the tutorials, make it through the first progression milestone or content unlock, wherever the natural place is for their first session to end. Whatever you intend for that onboarding experience to be, design it to be short, just a few minutes in length, because that's how long you have to grab players' attention and convince them to return to play again the next day. Now you'll notice that the top of the funnel is much wider than the bottom. And that's because most players do not make it all the way through. There are way more players at the top than there are at the bottom. The ones who do make it through, though, the players who make it all the way through your funnel, play your first time user experience, return the next day, they make up your day one or D1 retention metric. The day one retention metric tells you how many players start playing your game one day and then return the next. Older players are not counted. This is just about the new ones. And that's super useful because if you make a change to your onboarding experience, maybe you add a tutorial or tune down the difficulty of the first combat encounter, that change only affects your new users. So it's super useful to know what those new users are doing after that change. Logically, the more users make it through your funnel and return to play your game again, the higher your daily and your average D1 retention will be. It just comes down to having as wide a funnel as possible and then retaining as many of those players as you can. And that's where the first time user experience design comes in. I could talk for hours on this topic and I do plan to put together a workshop that covers techniques and best practices. But since this is a short video, we're just going to cover some high level goals to make your onboarding experience engaging for your new players and effective at retaining them. And these are those goals. First one is teach the essentials. The very first thing that players need to know how to do is move around and interact with the world. Uh, if your game uses very conventional controls that the vast majority of players will already be familiar with, then explicitly teaching them might not be necessary. But if you have controls that are unusual, but are vital to the experience, like passing and tackling in Super Striker League here, you can help your players out by at least surfacing those controls, listing them on the HUD when they're relevant. You don't want your players to start up the game and immediately feel confused and frustrated because they don't know how to control their avatars. Now, players also need to know what to do in your game and why. In other words, they need to understand your core loop. I'll link the level up video on core loops in the description for anyone who's not familiar with the term. But basically, 
What are the essential actions that players will need to do repeatedly in order to make progress? The core loop is the heart of your game. The actions players will spend most of their time doing. So if they don't understand how to perform those actions as well as why they should spend their time doing them, then they probably aren't going to have a lot of fun and won't stick around for long. Now, some of your games may have just a few simple mechanics, which makes deciding what goes into your onboarding experience really easy. Others of you may have games that involve a lot of deep systems and strategy. It's gonna take a long time for players to learn all of that. But I recommend just sticking with the basics early on. You don't wanna overload your players with too many choices or try to teach everything at once. You can layer on complexity and depth after their first session. As I mentioned earlier, you really only have a few precious minutes to convince players that your game is worth coming back to. So as important as it is to teach players how to play, it is just as important to get them actually playing the game and having fun as quickly as possible. Part of having fun in a game is feeling like you're making progress, getting better and leveling up, earning better loot and achieving other goals. If your game includes a level-based progression system, you can help players feel that success early by tuning your level curve such that they level up quickly in the first few minutes of the game. Psychologically, they will feel like they're good at it, and it's a very rewarding and motivating feeling that they'll want to repeat. And it will give them just a little taste of your game's progression systems, the fun new abilities and items and bonuses that they'll unlock as they make progress. Now, you can and should make leveling up a more difficult and time-consuming experience as the players get further into the game, because without increasing challenges and commensurate rewards, players are likely to get bored. But in the very first session, let them experience the joy of progress early and often. On Roblox, a big part of the fun is playing with others. So a first time user experience that's solo, where players don't have fun ways to interact with each other, or worse, are isolated completely, conflicts with that very basic motivation to play together. And it can prevent players from learning from one another, which would take some of the load off your tutorials. So whenever possible, make your onboarding experience a social one. Provide starter items and currency. If customization is part of your game, be it avatar or house or car, those systems are really popular on Roblox and players will want to engage with them quickly. So don't make them wait too long or jump through too many hoops before they get the opportunity. Make sure that they have some free items to start off with so they can express themselves and get excited about all the content to come. Also, giving players a little bit of currency to play with encourages them to check out your shop and make a purchase early. Even if they don't buy something immediately, maybe they have their eye on an item they can't quite afford yet, they'll still have that psychological boost of having some currency in their pocket, so they're not starting at zero. Also encourages players to check back in regularly with those systems and use the items that they've earned and see what's new in your shop. Now, I'm not saying give away all of your content or give new players access to your best items, but give them enough to experience those systems, have fun with them, and want more. Which is our final goal. Players should end their first session with an awareness of the full range of experiences that the game offers, even if they can't access it yet. Just knowing that it's there, waiting for them to reach it, is enough. Show them that continued investment in the game will pay off in the form of additional challenges and rewards and new ways to play, systems and content that will keep them engaged over the long term, like skill trees and boss fights and trading items with other players. This is when they should gain awareness of those features so they can see that there's so much more of the game ahead of them. Provide mid and long-term goals to your players, whether they're climbing the leaderboard or owning exotic pets or continuing a storyline or unlocking awesome new abilities. Give players those goals that they can accomplish soon in the next few sessions or days so they feel that sense of accomplishment. Also give them goals that will take weeks or months to achieve. That way they have something to look forward to, to work towards. You want to sell your players on the value of your game. Why is it worth continuing to play and investing time and effort? Well, here's why all of these reasons. Make those goals clear. Players should know what they're aiming for and how to get there. Those goals should be front and center, so they're always on players' minds. One effective way to make them visible is to put them in the world, someplace like a hub where players will see them frequently. But they can also live in the UI as quests, achievements, season passes, 
as long as you service those systems clearly and they live in a prominent location on the HUD, not buried in menus where they will be overlooked and forgotten. And finally, send your players on their way with an explicit call to action, a final push to continue playing. Now, if your onboarding experience includes text-based prompts to the player telling them what to do next, don't end abruptly with the final step of the tutorial. Players will wonder why they're suddenly not getting prompts anymore. They'll be super confused. Instead, end on a congratulatory note that tells them they're ready to play on their own, to go out and start achieving their goals. And bonus points, if you just let players unlock some great new ability or feature they'll be excited to use in order to achieve those goals. Send the player on their way with aspirations in mind. So that's what they think about when deciding whether to come back and play again tomorrow. And don't forget to add moments of joy. These are those times when the game surprises and delights the player, like using delightful animations to reward your player's successes and even their purchases. Every game has opportunities for joy, like leveling up and taking down a boss, finding a rare item, unlocking a new region, make those moments meaningful and joyful and special. You want your players to feel like their efforts and progress are recognized and celebrated. And that includes effort spent exploring your map and engaging in different systems in your game. Consider hiding secrets for them to find, like hidden loot or unexpected interactions with items in the world. It's those moments of surprise and delight that will stick with your players. And ending your onboard experience with one of them is a great strategy to cement that feeling in your players' minds and encourage them to return to your game so they can feel it again and again. And that's all the time we have today, but stay tuned for more Level Up Game Dev videos coming soon.